In 1964, a television series named Peyton Place hit the screens, weaving a web of funny, shocking, and sad tales. Have you ever reminisced about the first time you tuned in? Or is there a specific scene etched in your memory? This show isn't just a stroll down memory lane, it's a roller coaster of emotions. So keep your eyes glued because there are many more surprises in store. Now reflect on your cherished moments or personal experiences with this series. What made it stick with you? We're all ears for your stories and memories in the comments below. Share the laughter, the shocks, and the tears. What's your lasting impact from Peyton Place? Stay tuned for more. A viewer's perspective on the TV series Peyton Place to provide an unbiased assessment, one must acknowledge its profound impact on the cultural landscape. The show, which started airing in the Netherlands when I was around 10 years old, held a special place in our family's collective memory. Gathered around our black and white TV, we were captivated by the unfolding events in the community. Looking back, it's intriguing to consider the lasting impressions it may have left on a young, impressionable mind. 45 years later, revisiting the series on DVD feels like reconnecting with an old friend. However, the recollection of the initial story, particularly episodes 131, has been blurred by the passage of time. Some significant plot points like the tragic fate of Betty's baby or the enigmatic Elaine Carson have faded into obscurity. What once seemed straightforward and unambiguous has now undergone a substantial shift in perception. The characters, once taken at face value, now reveal deeper psychological nuances. For example, the romantic entanglements of characters like Rodney and Allison, which once tugged at the heartstrings, may now come across as somewhat melodramatic. The immature relationships of Norman and Judy and the hidden war traumas of George and Elliot add layers of complexity that were not fully appreciated in my youth. A retrospective analysis reveals a narrative that can be classified as a doctor's saga. The series invites viewers to examine the mental deviations of its characters through the lens of rational analysis, often embodied by a physician or, occasionally, a veterinary figure such as Swain. The exploration of these deviations, though at times disconcerting, lends the series a certain depth. For those who appreciate stories delving into the complexities of human behavior, it may find resonance. However, if you seek similar narratives with a different cultural backdrop, the Dutch film Dorp on de Rivier offers an alternative exploration. It includes a compelling scene where a doctor undertakes a perilous journey across a river on moving ice flows to attend to a delivery. In conclusion, with its exploration of mental deviations and the rational perspective, the series provides a unique and thought-provoking viewing experience. It offers a glimpse into the intricacies of human behavior, reminding us that first impressions may not always capture the full depth of a character's journey. Dorothy Malone raised concerns about her diminishing role relative to co-star Mia Farrow on the TV series. In 1968, she took legal action, accusing 20th Century Fox of breaching her contract. The dispute concluded with an out-of-court settlement. Christopher Conley expressed apprehension in a 1965 interview, fearing removal from the show. However, he remained part of the cast throughout the series. Ryan O'Neill alleged that infants on the show were sedated to prevent crying during scenes. In summary, Malone's legal dispute, Connolly's concerns, and O'Neill's allegations added behind-the-scenes drama to the series. In 1965, Mia Farrow's sudden unannounced vacation prompted the writers to hastily incorporate a coma storyline into the series. They publicly disclosed their uncertainty about the fate of her character during this period. Barbara Parkins shared an encounter with Betty Davis, who bluntly questioned when she would release the grip on Rodney Harrington. In July 1967, Lee Taylor Young exited the show upon discovering her pregnancy by Ryan O'Neill. These behind-the-scenes events, including Farrow's abrupt absence, Parkin's encounter with Davis, and Taylor Young's departure, added an extra layer of drama to the series. Ed Nelson, when asked about standout performances, credited Frank Ferguson, George Macready, and Tim O'Connor. Barbara Parkins garnered such popularity during the show's run that discussions arose about a potential spin-off titled The Girl from Peyton Place, tailored for her, although this idea was ultimately abandoned. In late 1965, Dorothy Malone's workload decreased significantly, requiring her presence on set only two days a week, leading her to remark, I've never worked so little or had such an easy job. 
These insights provide a glimpse into the dynamics of the show's cast and the discussions around potential spin-offs and actors' schedules, adding layers to the series. The original plan for Constance in the early episodes of the series was to have her kill Elliot, leading to a dramatic murder trial. However, Elliot's unexpected popularity among viewers led to the abandonment of this plan. Jenna Rollins, a member of the cast, imposed a cigar ban on the set due to her discomfort around them, revealing that she turns green whenever one is nearby. In her memoirs, Mia Farrow expressed disbelief at the success of the series and attempted to leave her contract soon after it aired. Two years later, with the influence of her then-husband Frank Sinatra, she was released from her ABC contract. Farrow's character, Allison McKenzie, was written out by having her run away from town. In 1968, the writers responded to Farrow's departure by introducing a storyline where a new girl claimed to have Allison's baby, coinciding with the release of Rosemary's Baby. These behind-the-scenes insights into the initial plot changes, Jenna Rowland's cigar ban, and Mia Farrow's unexpected exit provide a deeper understanding of the series' development, adding intriguing layers to the narrative. Christopher Connolly secured his role in a unique twist of fate. He didn't audition but landed the part when he assisted a girl with a screen test for the show. Paul Monash, unimpressed with the girl, offered Connolly the role of Norman. Connolly's unconventional entry into the series added an unexpected element to the cast dynamics. Joyce Gilson stepped in as a late replacement for Mia Farrow and Lee Taylor Young. Despite press anticipation for her to follow in the footsteps of her predecessors, Gilson never achieved the expected fame. Her tenure in the series marked a shift in casting, bringing a new face to the ongoing narrative. Jill Rowland was originally cast as Selena Cross, a character with a dark backstory involving the killing of her sexually abusive stepfather in the novel. However, ABC executives intervened during pre-production, demanding the omission of this storyline. As a result, Rowland was dropped from the cast, altering the trajectory of Selena's character in the series. The cast changes and behind-the-scenes decisions involving Connolly, Gilson, and Rowland contributed to the evolving landscape of the show. These unforeseen developments added an intriguing layer to the series, shaping its trajectory in unexpected ways. Barbara Rush took on her role in Peyton Place because of the promise of a light work schedule. She stated, I was told I would work only two or three days a week. The studio is only five minutes from my home. I do not have to leave my husband and children for location filming. In a 1969 interview, Ed Nelson revealed that the original cast had a low opinion of the show. Ruth Warwick, in an interview, expressed dissatisfaction working with him, describing him as someone so in love with himself that it is pitiful. These behind-the-scenes revelations shed light on the cast's initial perceptions and dynamics, contributing to the series' development. In 1962, a one-hour pilot episode of the TV series was created, featuring the Cross family storyline from the novel. However, producer Erna Phillips decided to remove the Cross family from the show's development, Moving forward, the original plan in the 11th episode was to have the character Betty Anderson meet her demise in a car accident. Despite this initial intent, the rising popularity of Barbara Parkins, who portrayed Betty, led the producers to reconsider, ultimately choosing not to go through with the character's death. During the show's peak, Christopher Connolly experienced significant fan engagement, receiving approximately 400 letters per week. This influx of fan mail reflected the popularity and impact of the series on its audience. These behind-the-scenes decisions, from scrapping the Cross family to altering the fate of Betty Anderson's character, provide insight into the dynamic development of the show. Christopher Connolly's fan mail volume highlights the connection the audience had with the characters, emphasizing the show's cultural impact. In 1968, the cast of Peyton Place saw significant additions with African-American characters portrayed by Ruby D. Percy Rodriguez and Glenn Turman. This marked a noteworthy shift in the show's representation, accompanied by the hiring of African-American writers. However, writer Gene Boland publicly raised concerns about the rewriting of their ideas, leading to his dismissal. Ozzy Davis, Dee's husband, joined as a consultant amidst these changes. Warner Anderson, who initially portrayed Matthew Swain, ceased on screen appearances after the first season. Despite this, Anderson continued his involvement as the narrator in every episode until the series' end. 
Notably, Anderson did not receive on-screen credit for his ongoing role as the show's narrator. Throughout its five-year network run, Peyton Place maintained a unique approach by airing exclusively original episodes. In an unusual move for prime time, ABC refrained from broadcasting repeats during the summer, distinguishing the series from typical television practices. These behind-the-scenes developments, encompassing the addition of African-American characters, Warner Anderson's transition to a narrator role, and the commitment to original content, offer a deeper understanding of Peyton Place's evolution. These aspects, alongside the previously mentioned dynamics and plot changes, shape the series' narrative, providing insights into its dynamic journey.